hello guys uh, welcome back to my channel yet another very exciting episode i know i've been kind of mia but i'm back with a good one so i'm around acacia mall this is uh, kololo avenue <laughs> okay the name of street or maybe lower kololo drive but there is acacia mall uh, so today's video I want to show you guys uh, some activities that you can do when you visit Kampala or when you visit Uganda. If you are planning to travel to Kampala anytime soon, these are things that you can easily do which really won't cost you a lot of money. But you can still get the feel of Uganda, you know, so that's what you are going to do in this video. The first activity is actually not too far from here. I know many people know Acacia Mall, especially foreigners who come in here because it's the best mall that we have. So. When you're around Acacia, I'm going to show you something you can do from this point onwards. So right ahead, we do have uh, that Tagore Living, those brown apartments that you see. And then there is City Oil, where there is Cafe Javas, and then there is Kira Road. So we're going to start the video from here. And if you're traveling to Kampala anytime soon, I always get questions like, I need an Airbnb, somewhere to stay, help me out. And I know sometimes I'm not the best person at responding because I can't keep up with everyone. So I've made for you guys a free guide which gives you Airbnbs and hotels listed from the highest range, which is more expensive, to the lower range, which is very, very affordable, as low as maybe $50 a night or maybe $40 a night. So that free guide is available for you to download it. It will help you out if you're traveling to Uganda. I'm going to leave for you guys a link in the description. And this is City Oil. And then there, there is Cafe Javas. That's one of my favorite restaurants, actually, around this area. Yes, yeah, so you can always go there and they also have good coffee. So we are going to walk on Kira Road. That's Tagore Living, are those apartments. So we are going to walk on Kira Road, which goes all the way to Wandegea, and then continues to the city center. But on Kira Road, we have the Uganda Museum. So the Uganda Museum is just ahead, a walkable distance from Acacia Mall. It's something you can go and check out, you know, to know the history of Uganda. So we are going to walk all the way to the museum and check it out. I've been there once, but that's like maybe 10 years back. It's been a very, very long time. So I'm excited as well to see. It's a beautiful, sunny, busy day in Kampala. Today is what? Today is a Tuesday. Yeah, I think today is a Tuesday. So business is going on as usual. So in the interest of time, I got a quick border. But that is the Uganda Museum. You guys see this signpost. And then right across there is Levels. Eh? Levels is a very popular hangout. If you guys go out, you know, Levels up there, it's always happening. This is the route that comes from Acacia, where we're coming from. So right here is the museum. We're going to enter in and check it out and learn about the history of Uganda. And for my new subscribers, you're very welcome. I create content about Uganda. I'm Ray Kimbabazi, content creator here in Kampala. And for my returning subscribers, thank you so much for always watching and supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate you guys here. Yeah. So, this is the museum. I hope they allow filming. I'm not sure, but <laughs> it's nice and green and quiet. So, we're inside the museum. Uh, that's where the entrance is. So obviously there is an entry fee which is 5,000 for Ugandans and 15,000 for foreigners which is very affordable actually. That's very little money. I think this is what they used to carry in people back in the day. <laughs> and then right here we do have some drums. I'm sure these are from the central Uganda culture. This is what they used to drum. This one as well, it's a very popular one. And then I think this is from Busoga. This is a xylophone. When you play this, it has like, it produces very nice sound. This is a xylophone. Let's explore this place and see what it's all about. It's quite huge, actually. Wow. Dancing headdresses, one at initiation rites, weddings, funerals. 
victory celebrations. Look at all this culture stuff. So this is the people of Uganda. Yeah, so Uganda, we are largely Bantu people. Most you can see West Uganda, all this is Bantu, Central Bantu, West Bantu, and then North. We have Nilotics, we have Luo, Highline Nilotics. This shows like how people entered into Uganda and migrated into Uganda. So they say these migration routes are based on the oral traditions and present linguistic divisions. These are reeds, you guys may know reeds, they are just painted. In the lake regions of Uganda, beer is made from bananas, while in the deer areas to the north it is prepared from grain. Some mountain peoples drink honey beer. Yes, yeah, so these are the ports. You can see that one has like one, two, three, four, five outlets. I feel, I think that's done a lot in northern Uganda. People sit around and drink from that port with very many different outlets. Wow, these are smoking pipes. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> you know, these are usually done by old men, these smoking pipes. So you can see the one for sugar. <laughs> different tribes make it differently. But sugar, Samia, Batoro, Karimajong, Itesot, Amba, Bari. All these are different shapes of smoking pipes. Yeah. Say not to smoking though, eh? it's bad for your health, no smoking. There is different stuff from long time ago. These are arms, arrows, bows and arrows. Everybody used to use to fight back in the day. Same here, arms, weaponry. These are spears actually. Everybody used to use to fight back in the day. You can see these chairs, stools. This is a mat, a chair. All these uh, culture, tradition, traditional architecture. Sekabaka's shrine in Buganda. Yeah, that's a shrine. And then obviously the back cloth from Buganda Kingdom. This is what people wear. This is like a traditional fit. And then those beads. And then the outfits of the Buganda culture. This is Buganda culture fit. The Kanzu for the men and the Gomesi for the women. This is from Teso, a dancing outfit of Teso people. Wow, this is so cool. Ceremonial dress, Nakaima Priestess of Mubende Hill. This is from Western Uganda. I think maybe that's the dress of the king or the queen. You can see how they are dressed, they seated on the throne. This is a cool place to check out, definitely. Very affordable when you visit Uganda. Now this is insects. I've come to a different section. Reptiles, some dried snakes in there. So there is different sections of the museum, all displaying different stuff. So I don't know what's down here. Let's go all the way down and see what's this it. This is the Impala, I think, the Cob, where the name Kampala comes from. Wow, it's so dark in here. There's this section here with old cars packed in here. This is like an old G wagon. This is <laughs> very interesting. Look at this kind of cars are these. Like an old, old Benz. It's a jig wagon, but it's super old. Some old cars here. They just say, please do not open it. And there is a limousine. I think this is a limousine. Those long cars that used to be the thing back in the day. See that? Just says, please do not open it. But. I don't know, like the description. Eh? There is a very big boat here, it's so huge. And there is a car, 1925 Ford Model T125. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is a car from 1925, super old, a Ford car. I think these were the first cars maybe back in the day. Very tiny, Jesus. It's also made of wood on the inside. Some parts of it are made of wood. Wow. Ah, so we have the parts for the Olympics. Some Olympic medalists here. 
Let's see who stands out. So there is a BET award here that was given to Kenzo. So Kenzo is one of the most popular Ugandan artists. He won a BET. That's interesting, and they have it here in the museum. Viewers Choice Interna Best New International Act, Ed Kenzo. <laughs> in 2015. That's very interesting. Yeah. There is Evolution of Man. Another section of the museum. I think people just need to know that man was created by God. <laughs> we did not evolve from anything. Uh, this is the outside. Beautiful views. This is bamboo that the views here. This place is about mountain gorillas. You guys know we have lots of mountain gorillas. There is a video showing one in the other room. I'm going to watch a little video about chimpanzees and mountain gorillas in this section of the museum. This was the museum tour. This is a fun activity you can do, uh, very inexpensive but very educative as well. You'll be able to learn a lot about Uganda. So right about now, let's head for activity number two. where the museum is and we come all the way to Old Kampala this area is called Old Kampala because this is where the city began so this is where Kampala started to develop and then right above there is Mengo where the Kabaka's palace is if time allows I'll go and show you guys the Kabaka's palace as well so this is where there is Gaddafi mosque also known as Uganda national mosque this is a place you must visit when you come to Kampala and I'm going to show you why. So this is the main entrance. It has been built and improved. It never used to be like this. Yes, yeah, so let's check out this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I've just been turned into a hajati. <laughs> Jeez, this is very tight. Just a and then pay 10k. That's about three dollars, or even less than three dollars. And then foreigners pay 25k. That's about maybe seven dollars, maybe 6.5 dollars around that. We're yeah. going to do the tour. Uh, this is the inside of the mosque. So we have to dress like Muslim women as a mosque because you have to respect the mosque. But the reason why you have to come here is because you're going to be able to get a very, very beautiful view of Kampala. So this mosque is the place because it has that point up there. You're able to climb all the way up and see all the seven hills of Kampala or even the 21 hills of Kampala. And that's what we are going to be able to do. Remove our shoes. <laughs> and then leave them somewhere here. Okay. Wow, this is so beautiful, guys. So big as well. Jesus Christ. So this is the mosque. Guys, the carpet feels so good on the feet. Like, 
Feels so good. Jeez, I'm already panting because I'm wearing extra layers of clothes now. <laughs> but this is really cool. Like, it's a very beautiful place. You get a very nice, calm feeling. It's quiet. Yeah. So, definitely should come and check out this. It is so, so huge. So, so huge. And we have the Korans a couple of them. This should be my first time touching a Quran, by the way. For us, I know the Bible. Oh, so the Quran, you start like this, eh? Okay, I think, I don't know. It's, it's the opposite. Oh, so, <laughs> so this is the front. Yeah, I think this is where the Quran starts. Yeah. So what we've learned so far is that Gaddafi Mosque was started by Idi Amin in 1971. He laid the foundation for it. But because of the instability in Uganda at the time, they were never able to complete it until 2001, when Muammar Gaddafi of Libya visited Uganda, and then the Muslims in Uganda requested him to fund the mosque. So they started its construction in 2002, all the way to 2006. Yes, all the way to 2006. So construction took about four years, and then it was opened in 2008. So that's why it's called Gaddafi Mosque, because he funded it. But it's also usually referred to as Uganda National Mosque. So this is upstairs where the women and the children sit. Awa Alia is a place for the men. It's so huge. So the mosque also has two sections. This is the upper section, which is usually open for special days like Eid, Eid prayers. But then they have a lower section where people are always coming to, to pray at least five times a day. Very beautiful. Left the inside of the mosque. There is another big section outside here. It's beautiful, eh? So this is Aisha. Hello, guys. <laughs> Aisha is the tour guide on the mosque. She's helping us out today, yeah. So what she was saying is that actually this big space is used for prayers as well on ED. People get to 30,000, as many as 30,000 people coming here to pray. So they will utilize the whole of this space. That is interesting, plus the inside. So if you're to get a seat, you have to be very, very early. Yeah, and then this is still part of the mosque as well. So we've been climbing for the last maybe 30 minutes. We are finally on the top. <laughs> I'll show you guys what we had to go through. Jesus came from all the way down. Do you think you can see it well? Here you have a very nice view of all the seven hills, the original seven hills of Kampala. You can see them from this point, though they are quite small. But if you see two masts in the background, that is Kololo Hill. And then if you come right here, if you can see where there is a lot of green and a white building, which is Sheraton Hotel, that is Nakasero Hill. And then when you come down here, where you see the stadium, that is Nishvo Stadium under construction right next to it, is Owino Market. And then when we come all the way this side, if you guys see lots of green trees, white house with a green roof, which is the Kawakas Palace, that is Mango Hill. And then when we come this side, there is Ruraga Hill, where there is Ruraga Cathedral. I don't know if you guys can see it. <laughs> then we also have Namirembe Hill, where there is St. Paul's Cathedral, Namirembe. And then we have Makere Hill. Makere Hill is all the way this side, where there is Makere University. 
So Makere University is the oldest university in East Africa. It's right now about 102 years old. It started off as a technical school or like a college with maybe 14 students only. But right now it's very big. It's the biggest university. Most people go to Makere University in Uganda, most students. And then from here you can see just very many different parts of Kampala. You can see Watoto Church, you can see the new NSSF Tower, you can see Pearl of Africa Hotel, you can see lots of different places from this point here. Yes, yeah, so, and I also have to say that there is a very, very nice breeze at this point. The air is blowing. I'm all covered, you can't see how the air is, but it's really blowing. So when you come to Kampala, this is definitely a very good place to check out. To be able to get an aerial view of the city, just to see how Kampala looks like. Activity number three concluded, so let's go to activity number four. Number three, which you need to do when you're in Kampala, is to take a city walk. Random city walk. It may sound easy, but walking around Kampala can actually be exhausting because it's not the easiest thing per se. The place is very, very busy and very, very chaotic. You have to be careful when you're walking not to knock people or get knocked around. Most especially not to get knocked by those crazy border guys. But when you visit, feel free to take a walk from wherever you are. You can have your Google Maps and just keep walking around. Maybe walk to the restaurant, walk to the city centre. Just explore the neighbourhood and find out what is happening. Don't be within your comfort zone in the Airbnb hotel. Just move out and walk. If people say hello, you say hello to them. If you want to talk to someone, Ugandans are very friendly. You just strike a conversation, it doesn't usually take much, you know? Yes, yeah, so feel free to walk. And this is called Bombo Road. Up there is Watoto Church. So you have to be careful while crossing Kampala Road. So that <laughs> you don't get knocked. We don't have the best roads, but you can still walk around and get your shoes dirty. So this is Bombo Road. We are going to climb all the way up to Buganda Road. Uh, right here is Watoto Church downtown. And then I'll show you activity number four, which you need to check out as well. And once again, if you're this thing, then you can download the Airbnb guide, it's free of charge, down in the description. It will help you out to find a place to stay and also where to get meals. Food is important, so you need to know the right places where to eat, where you'll find nice food. Either local cuisine or a foreign cuisine, they're in those two categories. I'll put them for you guys as well. So. So, walking in Kampala requires skills eh? crossing the road. So up we go all the way to Nakasero and Lumumba Avenue and then right up there there is Senana. It's a big supermarket. But right here is Buganda Road. We are going to go to the craft market. So Buganda Road craft market is quite popular. You can buy some African stuff, African handmade stuff. You find all of them in the craft market, which is right here. 
Buganda Road is also one way, it's a one way drive, so you have to be careful if you're driving how you drive on this road. There's lots and lots of paintings here. Jesus, so many of them. So you can get souvenirs. You will want to visit this place to get stuff to take for your people. Stuff from Uganda, take for your people back home. So you can see Buganda Road Crafts Market. And Jewelry. So let's enter from here. We are going to check out maybe some different things that they have. You can see that. We'll find uh, different items here that you can buy. They have lots of things in the craft market. You'll be able to find something eh, to take back home. Thank you. How are you? There's a lady here. She's she's calling me. So, nice. so this is made out of cow horn. Eh? Yes. They carve horns. Look at this. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the items. Very beautiful. So can I use this to cook or? Yes. To cook, wow. To serve. These are really nice. Eh? These are really good. Something like this. It's a shopping bag. Which one? one? Let me see. Mm, you open. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, wow. What? It was for. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. I've never seen it folded like that. What's your name? I'm Jamila. Jamila. Yes, yeah, so you guys you can come and support Jamila at the Crafts Market. I'm going to put your number as well, okay. so people can come and support you. They watch this video. I'm a YouTuber. Eh? I do oh. content. Yeah. So this is Jamila's shop. There's we lots of things. We, we have, you know, you have, we have three villages. Three villages yes. within the crafts market. So this is which village is this? It's called East Africa. This is East Africa. Eh? Mm. Shop number thirty-seven. Shop number thirty-seven. Mm. Yes, yeah, so shop number 37, yeah. East African Village. This is really nice, yeah, yeah. This is a very nice, unique laundry bag. This is so cool. This is so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's from Butter Tops. Butter Tops? Ah, okay, yes. So is this a table mat? Yes, table mat, or for decoration. Guys, kindly, when you come to a craft shop, support Jamila. She has been kind enough to show us her shop, and I'm going to put her number. Please come and support her. Yeah, because other people didn't let me see their shops, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I asked earlier. They were like, nope. These are really nice. Ah, this is really cool. These are really nice. Yeah, these are really nice. This is really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's really nice. Some nice bags there as well. Actually, the crafts village is big. Eh? This place has a parking lot for cars. So there's a lady calling me here. Hello. Hello how are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm what are you selling? Okay. A drum from the Baganda culture actually but this can just be like a decoration in your house this is a stick for old men how do they call this in English stick. yes <laughs> so this is a walking stick which was a muzei Swahili word for old man that was a like this for walking so if you want to buy a walking stick 
they are right here as well. Also have these really cool hats. <laughs> she doesn't know how to play her instrument. This is your shop, eh? Yes. Yes, so what's your name? Hey, I'm Sadika. Sadika. Yes. So guys, you come and support Sadika. She has really nice items. This is her business. Wine holders. Ah, ah, yeah, this is so cool. This is a wine holder. Wow. Also, all these are wine holders. Ah, I see, I see, I see. So they have some really cool items. You can find something in here. I'm going to put your number. So guys, that when you visit, you come and support Sadika. What's this? This one is like when you're eating. Mm -hmm like this the, mm. the the holders that chinese used to eat food yes. ah. especially let's like chinese buy ah, a chinese buy them eh? yeah. wow that's interesting look at this oh this is cow horn yeah this is this so cool you put some like salt you put then you put some spices so. ah it's a shaker it's like a salt shaker oh okay i see i see Thank you, Bambi. Thank you for your time. You give me your number. Oh. 07 59 87 You look like a baby. Eh? You look really young. It's a baby, by the way. You look like a baby. <laughs> Kale, thank you so much. Eh? I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank Kale. you for visiting. Of course, Kale. Guys, so make sure you come and support Sadika and her business when you visit the Crafts Village in Kampala. Yes, so right now we are going to go to the final place. Last activity we are going to do, I'm in Tinder. And this is Tinder Junction. That road goes all the way to Nakawa. This goes to Nigeria and then that goes to the city centre. There is a restaurant here that I always eat at. It's called Oscan Foods and it has Ugandan food. So we are going to eat Ugandan food. Obviously, we do want to eat Ugandan food. So come. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Yes, yeah, so come, let's eat some Ugandan food. So my food is here. Thank you. So this is cow peas, so matoke which is a staple, avocado, this is plantain, gonja, we call it gonja, this is pumpkin, and this is Irish potato here. Yeah. Actually very hungry so I'm excited to eat. <laughs> First meal of the day. We are going to do matoke and some cow peas, these are actually fresh, they are not the dry ones. Eh? These are the fresh ones, so they're usually tastier than the dry ones. The food is very hot. Very tasty. This is plantain. They boil it. I know that West Africans also love plantain. We also love plantain in Uganda. <laughs> so let's see. This is very tasty actually. So one thing about Ugandan food is that Ugandans pride in eating boiled and fried food without cooking oil. So when you go to Ugandan restaurants, most are local food restaurants, they don't fry the food. They just boil it in its natural state. They'll add maybe some tomatoes, onions, carrots. So we sort of fried in that, <laughs> eating, un eating unfried food. So local food has to be boiled, it shouldn't be fried, whether it's chicken, whether it's beef, or whether it's fish, like it should be boiled but not fried, but only in Uganda. Yes, yeah, so make sure that you go to any restaurant when you visit and try some Ugandan food. Uh, let me enjoy my meal as to conclude this video. Finish to eat local Ugandan food. Make sure that you try that out uh, when you come to Kampala. Yeah, and if you're planning to visit Kampala anytime soon, I've created for you guys a free guide that has Airbnbs. 
ranging from high-end to low-range class restaurants as well so that you can easily find a place to eat so that you can easily find a place to sleep and a place to eat because that's something I get asked a lot and sometimes I don't have time to respond to everyone so the free guide is meant to help you out if you find a place to stay and a place to sleep so make sure that you download it with a link in the description that being said I hope you guys have enjoyed the video I'll give it a like make sure to share it with someone who may find it helpful thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one and of course if you're not subscribed make sure that you do subscribe as well bye bye